In today's video, we're gonna find out where that fine line is between cheapest gear possible and great audio. Curious to see what my choices are? Let's find out together in today's episode of Level Up. All right, 2023, and you're ready to start your YouTube channel. You start doing some research, checking everybody out, seeing how they're doing it, and you notice just about everybody under the sun has a Shure SM7B, a $400 microphone, and they're using audio interfaces like the Rodecaster Duo. Then you check out the audio interfaces they're using to mix their audio gaming channel, and you see Rodecaster Pro 2, Rodecaster Duo, the Streamer X, $400 and up for audio interfaces. Very pricey. You want to get started, but you don't have that kind of dough. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at my top choices for audio gear that can get you started at the bottom basement lowest price that I'm willing to go that would still give you great audio. Let's check it out. All right, let's start with the microphone. My choice for the best XLR microphone at the cheapest price as far as a studio dynamic broadcast microphone is the Fifine K669D. An amazing microphone right out of the box. This is what it sounds like. Built like a tank. Build quality is through the roof. It's going to last forever as far as the build quality. If you drop it on the floor, the floor will die before the microphone. You drop it on your toes, the toes will break before the microphone. And it just sounds great. You pair this with the Shure SM7B pop filter, the round chunky monkey right there. And oh my gosh, what a sound. Just listen to it. This is what the K6690D sounds like. And it only goes for $36.99 on Amazon. Link down below. In fact, earlier, I think a couple months back, I did a review of this microphone where I called it, and I still hold true to it, I uh, will die on this hill. This is the pound-for-pound pound best budget XLR microphone out there. The studio dynamic look just sounds absolutely amazing. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. And how it sounds with plosives without the pop filter. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. The K6690 by Fafine. Mm, absolute gem. This is the Behringer XM8500 Ultra Voice. An amazing microphone, well known as the unicorn of all XLR dynamic uniform uniforms, unicorns. Just a great mic, but it's a handheld. They want that broadcast studio style of a microphone. Handhelds aren't for everybody, but if that doesn't bother you, this is the deal for you. I think it goes for $25 on Amazon. I got it for $19 a while back, but with inflation and stuff going crazy and supply shortages, things like that, it's about $25 now, but you get a great, sturdy, durable case to put it in, travel case. Just a great look to it. Now, with the XM8500, as it's well known, very crisp, very bright, very detailed and articulate, but it's missing some low end. You have to EQ that in. Or you can add some low end or some more body to it simply by adding a pop filter on it. You can go with a pop filter for the Shure SM58 that fits on that. You can put it on here. Or you can do something that I've done a couple times in the past. I've actually added the pop filter for the Shure SM57 on that. This is the A2WS. It goes for $14.95. And this is the Behringer XM8500 Ultra Voice with the A2WS pop filter for the Shure SM57 on it. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. Very portable, small footprint, easy to travel with, and gives you a little bit of protection from the plosives. Now, I took the capsule off in order to get this to fit, and it doesn't go all the way on it like the Shure SM57. If you, uh, with the Shure SM57, you could slide it all the way down to this line right here. It doesn't go that far down on the Behringer XM8500. It stops right where the threads are. So I just kind of set it on there right nice and neat on a boom arm and I get this sound. But if you're going to be moving it around, that's not the best choice. That's when I go with the tried and true, the old trusty Shure SM7B pop filter, as you just saw earlier with the K669D. Very thick. Very nice, high quality. I think they're $8.99 on Amazon. And now listen to this sound. Absolutely love the sound of this microphone with this pop filter on it. Very deep, gives it more body, more fullness. The cage that covers the capsule is back on it. Pop filter sits right on there, nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. The Behringer XM85 Ultra Voice. XM8500 Ultra Voice for $25.99 with a $9 upgrade to get this sound. Voila, gold, baby, just gold. If you don't mind the handheld look of a microphone in your frame, 
This is, pound for pound, the best microphone as far as price, performance, and build quality out there. The unicorn of all unicorns, the Behringer XM8500. Now you're listening to me on the Fifine K669B. This is a USB microphone, and it's made by Fifine. It's been out for at least six or seven years now, at the least, and it is still an amazing sounding microphone. And other USB microphones that are coming out now in this price range, they might have more lights or more gadgets or more doohickeys on it, but the sound, it's still hard to beat even today. And this retails for $29.99. Now the knocks on this microphone are the cable that is attached to this is not removable. We're other USB microphones that are coming out today for $40 and up, you have the USB cable that detaches from the microphone and can be replaced if you have any issues with it. And the other knock on it is there's no direct headphone monitoring that comes with this microphone. Whereas the newer ones in this 30, I'd say like $36 to $46 price range that are out here like the Mayano DGM20, this retails for about 40 bucks, I believe. This is $29.99, but it also comes in different colors. You can get this in, as I'm looking on my screen right now, uh, you can get this in blue, you can get this in silver, you can get it in green, and you can get it in pink as well. So just, just a great microphone still to this day. Just listening to the sound alone, absolutely love this for the price, $29.99. And you can get pop filters with it online pop filters that look similar to this right here it's a screen pop filter with rubber bands in it you take that and you simply pop that on here like so okay now with the pop filter on here peter piper packed a pack of pickled peppers he puts pineapple on his pizza peter piper packed a pack of pickled peppers he puts pineapple on his pizza and this pop filter goes for about nine dollars on amazon just a great sound the five fine k669b now this is the Mayano DGM20. This goes for $34.99. It is a USB-C to USB-C or USB-A. It's got the adapter at the end of it, so you can pick which one you want at the end. This goes for $34.99. It's a dynamic condenser microphone. It's got wonderful features on it. It's got noise cancellation, uh, a button on the top, a mute button on the top. It's also got RGB lights on it. If RGB is your thing, you're looking at blue right now. You got light purple or pink. You've got the unicorn, fluffy unicorn color, RGB, rainbow, Skittles setting. You got a couple of other of the uh, RGB settings where it changes colors on you. And then you've just got solid colors of red. You've got amber or orange. You've got yellow. You've got green. You've got light blue. You've got dark blue. Out of the box, no processing on it whatsoever. And this is what it sounds like. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He gets pineapple on his pizza. Now for $34.99 with this microphone, you get the stand. When you take it off the mic stand with this little screw right here, you can attach an adapter that allows you to connect it to a boom arm, which I would highly recommend because the knocks with this one is. It's extremely sensitive to handling noise. You can just see how it picks up just touching cables on my desk. Actually, this is me touching the USB-C cable. This is me touching the stand. This is me touching the desk. So very sensitive to noise, but the way I get around it is whenever I use this microphone, I connect it to a boom arm, but I attach it to a desk that is separate from this desk. I have two desks side by side by design where I can mount my microphone boom arms to that desk. And that way you can't hear any handling noise or any kind of noise sensitivity as far as me moving around, clicking on the mouse clicking on the keyboard or just touching things on my desk it doesn't come through. So I, you can negate that handling sensitivity by doing those things or mounting it to a mic stand separate from your desk. And then you're getting just this sound. The pros about it, again, the RGB lights, the gain knob is not a knob on the front. It's the dial on the bottom. It just rotates left and right to adjust the gain. It's got headphone monitoring on it. So again, the other microphone, the Fifine K669B, that was $30, $29.99, but no headphone monitoring, no RGB, and a cable that does not de detach. But for $29.99, absolutely amazing sound. For an extra $5, you're getting headphone monitoring. You're getting a detachable mic stand. It can mount to a boom arm if needed and it's got a gain knob on the bottom, noise cancellation, and a mute button right on the front. 
and headphone monitoring. Did I say that already? I love the fact that it has headphone monitoring. Very important to me. Mwah. Oh, and it's got a built-in pop filter that comes with it. That looks really nice. It's just a beautiful mic. This comes in black, it comes in pink, and it comes in white. I got the white because I've got a lot of black microphones. I need some spice and some color in this studio every now and then. And honorable mention for this one as well is the Meano DM30. Now, it has a metal cage on it, no pop filter on it, but it's got the headphone monitoring, and it's got the gain knob on the front, but that works with the Mayano app, so you have an audio interface when you plug it in. You go in there, and you can adjust and process your sound. The DGM20, it is not compatible as of yet with the Mayano app, but I'm hoping with the firmware update it does, because that would make this an absolute gem as well. The Mayano DGM20. All right, so the next piece of equipment in the line of your audio is the boom arm. And this boom arm I just got. Toner just did recently send this to me, and I took a look at it, and I had to re – I'd already recorded this video once, but I did it without this boom arm. And I'm doing it all over again because I want this boom arm, boom arm in here because, to me, it now takes the mantle as the best budget boom arm out there. Now – the budget boom arms out there that are really good, the InnoGear is a really good one for like $30 to $40, but this boom arm right here is a $20 boom arm. So four or five years ago, I, I bought a $30 boom arm kit, which was the cheap ones at the time, and it was a newer, and it's this guy right here, similar design. It's almost identical as far as build quality from here to here. From front to end, it's got the four springs on it. Very sturdy. Uh, great tension. Can hold some heavy-duty mics. It held my Rode Pod mic. No problem at all. That's a heavier mic. It handles the Fifine K669D, which is a heavy microphone. Whatever microphone you want to throw at it, it's going to hold it. And it's going to do a fine job. And I've had this four, five, six years. It's still kicking. So it's a great boom arm. And this was the one I included in it because I've had it. I've tried it. And it's Long-term testing, it's done good. But for $30, what came in the kit? You got the boom arm. You had a base with it. You also got this pop filter guy on there, just this huge pop filter. And just to kind of give you an idea how the pop filter sounds, Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. So it was a good boom arm, but man, this thing was huge. So if I wanted to use this in my shot, uh, hello, I look like Mr. Wilson from, uh, what was it, uh, Tim Allen show. Man, I cannot remember the name of that show, but it was Mr. Wilson who was sitting on the other side of the fence and you never saw his face. You only saw his eyes. Please tell me, Tool Time. No, Tool Time wasn't it. Anyways, put the comments down below if you guys remember that show, because I've completely forgot, but it was Tim Allen. And the only reason I remember that show so much is because it took place in Detroit and I'm a Detroit guy. But anyways, this reminds me of Mr. Wilson. You never know what his face looks like, but you know what his eyes look like. Thing was just ginormous. But for 30 bucks, did the job fine. But it has failed in one area. And that's this little TD base right here. This is what really separates the premium boom arms from the cheap ones. Now that kit was 30. This is only 20. What did I get with this kit that made it so special? Number one, I got this pop filter with it for condenser microphones. You see right here, this is a $10 pop filter. So right there, that should make it 30 bucks. $20 for the pop for the uh, boom arm. And it came with a little attachment like this, same as the other one. It also comes with Velcro straps, same as the Neewer did. And it even has its little logo on there. Gives you a whole bunch of uh, Velcro straps on it. That should make it $30 right there. But it's still only 20 with that pop filter on it. And that's not the best part about this boom arm. I've never been more excited about a cheap boom arm in my entire life because this is what I wish it had a long time ago. This is the base they give you with this $20 boom arm. Look at this base compared to the base you get with the Neewer for $30. That thing broke, bent, twisted. But as you see right here, the boom arm sits off to the side so the weight pulls it away from the table. Whereas this boom arm, it goes straight in above the top. The weight is right there on this massive base. This base is identical to the base that comes with the Rode PSA-1 and the PSA-1+. Plus. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, the Deity VO7U has a cheaper boom arm, but they give you the exact same base with it, which just makes it absolutely amazing. And here's what's really cool. If you try to get one of these bases separate just to add to it, you get a base like this. And it's got 
little bracket right here, but there's nowhere to hang your headphones. But with this guy right here, look at that. Look at the difference. Look how much further it goes out. You can hang your headphones on this. All of this for $19.99. I mean, it just makes no sense. You're getting like a $10 base mount and you're getting a $10 pop filter. The boom arm's like free. Like, dude. I get all excited when companies really take into account the person who's just starting out with the minimalist budget possible. Smallest budget possible. Toner. Man, home run. Thank you for that. Now for the last item in the line between your computer and your mouth, it is the audio interface. If you're going XLR instead of USB, you're going to need an audio interface. So what's the best, cheapest audio interface Live streaming, podcasting, gaming. It's got to cover all three, which is the cheapest that can handle that and handle it well. That's the Fifine SC3. It's all, I'm starting to feel like I'm doing a Fifine commercial here, but hey, man, they are just knocking it out of the ballpark as far as cheapest prices, best performance. Miano's right there. I think they have superior build quality with their products, and their audio is right there, but they're like maybe five, four or $5 more, so they keep getting bumped out of the cheapest, but they're great options out there for Miano too. Do not hesitate to spend a little bit more money for some better build quality by going with Meano either. But again, this isn't like, okay, second cheapest, best performance. This is the cheapest at the best. So if I find SC3, and as you see right here, it has 50 dB of built-in gain. Can it handle a Shure SM7B? In my review that I've done with this earlier, you'll see the link above in one of these corners for this. Uh, I used it with the Shure SM7B, handled it just fine. Did well. It's not going to sound its absolute best. It's not going to be 100% performance on that, but you're going to get like 90% performance, and a Shure SM7B at 90% is so much better than 90% of the other microphones out there, period, anyway, especially for screamers and gamers who get loud, quiet, loud, quiet. Just absolutely amazing. So... It can handle the Shure SM7B without a preamp. I would still recommend getting a preamp anyway because you want it to perform at its best, and the Shure SM7B just tells you uh, to perform at its absolute best. You want 60 dB of gain, but it's 50 dB. It pushes it just fine. But on the back, you have your XLR quarter jack input. You've got your switch for dynamic or condenser microphones. You've got a input, a 3.5 millimeter input for your headset. If you want to use a headset with a microphone built into it for gaming, you have a line in. Now they give you TRRS cables to go with that so you can connect it to a tablet or a phone to bring in audio from those devices. Just my absolute number one recommendation for people starting out on a gaming channel, people who are using consoles like the uh, PS5 or the Xbox, you can plug in your Xbox to the line in and get your game audio into your mix. The 15, 10, 5, 1, touchdown! All right, there we Just go. Just be mindful of that. You're going to have to get a TRS cable to connect to your, your console to your mixer. They provide you with a TRRS cable instead. Then you've got your headphone input, which I'm using right now. You have your line out where you can send your audio to your speakers or another device to record or to another computer if you want to send your audio out to another computer. And then you have your USB-C connection to, connect, to uh, connect it to your computer. And then just looking at it right here, you've got your RGB lights. You can change those lights on here. If you don't like that look, you can do different things with it. You got the red, you've got the yellow, you've got, or there you go. You got the red, you've got the yellow, you've got the uh, light green, then you've got the dark green, then you've got light blue, dark blue, purple. Then you've got your RGB flowy color that everybody seems to love. And then we've got the different kind of patterns of RGB, like a slow fade between colors right there. And then you've got this one right here, which is a slower fade in and out between colors. And then you've got this guy right here, which is my personal favorite, where it rotates in a circular motion. And as it does, as you see right there, there you go. You can see how the color just rotates round and round. I think that's really cool. Cool looking. I absolutely love that. That's my favorite. So there's all kinds of different RGB settings on this one. It has 48 phantom power to power condenser microphones. You've got electric 
button right here for auto tune. And then you've got custom panels right here for custom sounds to add to your gaming mix. You've got mute buttons for all your channels. Miano also has some cheap audio interfaces out there, but as far as I know right now, the AME2, the AMC, whatever it is, they don't have mute buttons for their microphones yet where the SC3 does, which is why this made my list over the Miano options out there for gaming. And then you got your meter here to let you know if you're peaking or not, if you can't see your OBS right off the bat. Uh, the knock on this one right here, I would say, is that there's only one XLR input. I would like a second mic input if I could. And the other one was headphone monitoring. I feel like the headphone monitoring, the preamps for your headphones are a little weak. They max out and they do the job, but I wish there was more room to get louder if I need it. And right now, maxed out is where I have to have it to be happy. It's good. That's where I would have it. But the fact that I can't go any higher if I need it higher, that's not available to me. That's the one knock that I have on it. Uh, and the sound card is not the best. So I, I know with mine, I don't have a whole lot of uh, latency. It's not zero but it's so close that there's no delay. It just gives it that tinny sound in your ear. I don't feel like there's any latency compared to the Miano audio interfaces that have a little bit more latency with it. So the latency doesn't bother me. It's so minuscule, it doesn't bother me, but it does change the sound of the microphone in your headset. So if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel for microphone reviews and things like that where you need to be able to interpret the audio, this is not the way to go. I would recommend the Behringer UM2 for microphone testings. That's You can get that. I bought mine like two months ago for $25. You can get it on sale from time to time for down around 25 bucks, just an absolute steal, but generally about 40 to 50 bucks. So I would recommend that for just podcasting or live streaming, but for gaming, this is the go-to. This is the one. All right, so there you go. Those are my choices, my selections, my recommendations for the best audio gear at the cheapest price. That, that line that I'm willing to cross to get cheap great audio gear. If you guys have better choices or other ideas on here that I didn't think of, please put them in the comments down below. Share them with the community so we can all get started and start having some fun. Start live streaming and put some good, awesome, amazing content out there. So hey, start streaming. Give me something to watch. Thank you for watching this episode of Level Up. My name is Mike Newman. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button, the notification bell so you guys are notified when future content goes up because it is going up until I see you guys in the next video. I won't see you. Peace out.